All right. Good evening. Time has come to fix Emacs. What's my problem with Emacs? Emacs is not perfect. Emacs does have its issues. Some of it is more annoying than anything. But because it's Emacs, we can fix all of our issues. One of my issues is as follows. Let's go to our con let's go to our config file. And let me show you something. When we find some code to control C and then single quote to edit it, it opens it in another window. This is annoying because it splits it up and I don't want it to split up. Um, we can configure this, we can change it, it's very simple. Let's uh, add another sub point to our org config. I know it's called basic config, whatever. Emacs Lisp. Um, I'm not even bother going to bother here. Um, there's a variable, it's called org source, uh, I guess window, oops, org source window setup current window. Um, I think that's it. Let's see if this worked. It did. Beautiful. Okay. There's more issues though. This was one tiny one. I have a lot of them to complain about. But um, I'm not sure if I can fit all of this into one video. Um, I might split it up or I'll just make a very long one. Here's another thing. Um, let's go to the scratch buffer. I write a good amount of C. And I use camel case. What is camel case? In case you don't know, um, this is camel case. Um, more commonly seen, like I know, like this. You can't put spaces in their names, so you capitalize the first letter of every subword. Um, why is this an issue? Okay, um, meta backwards is going to send me back a word. I want to be able to go here um, when I do meta b. Instead, it sends me to you know until it encounters the start of the line or b or, or y space. You can actually fix this. Now um, let's go to our config.org. Uh, now let's put it in minor settings, I guess, because it is a minor setting. It's built in, so no big deal. It's called subword, and we can enable it very very easily with global subword mode. You don't need to enable it globally. You can set up like a programming mode hook. But I also do it in like org mode sometimes. So, you know, and just me though. Save this, let's reload this. Let's go back to our scratch buffer. If I go forward now, um, it just works, okay? I can just move between subwords. That's that's kind of cute. I like this a lot. There is another thing. If you use Emacs, you are sooner or later going to be writing Elisp. What does Elisp and Lisp have? They have parentheses. A lot of them. Keeping track of parentheses. Uh, <laughs> you know, not it's not the easiest thing, especially by default. Now there is something called electric pair mode that is going to auto-complete your parentheses. It can only like, it auto-completes some parentheses. You can set it up to have it complete whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be parentheses. Mine does like curly braces, um, square, bra square, square brackets. It does quotation marks and so on and so forth. Um, I'm pretty sure I still remember how to do it. So I'm going to just add it here. Electric and I'll show, I'll show you because this is really important. We added so much Emacs Lisp and it annoys the absolute crap out of me that we don't have it set up. Um, first of all, we need to set a list of pairs. Electric pair pairs, I think. And what do we set it to? We can set it to a lot of things. One of them, the syntax for this, I'm pretty sure I still remember it correctly. But, um, we'll see. I think this is the correct syntax. You can, by the way, add more of them. Just, you know, have a list here. Actually, let's, let's add one more so I can show you what's up. If you do question mark like this, let's do, let's do square brackets. I use those a lot. Uh, like this. Okay. I think this is, I think our parentheses are set up correctly. 
all we need to do now is call a function called electric air mode and pass in t for true. And let's save, let's reload. Mm, no error. Okay. Let's see if this works. It does. It's, it's kind of cute actually. Oops. So that's, that's one issue gone. Um, and obviously you can set this up to do like um, quotation marks and so on. I actually have it set up this way for my own configuration. That's one another annoyance uh, gone. Let's collapse all of this. Uh, there is more. There is more. There is another annoyance. Um, and my annoyance is kill word. I don't really rant much. I'm not one to really rant on subjects. But this is um, this is an actual issue that I have. Imagine this is a real word, okay? Now, I use the Vim. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this multiple times already, but I use Vim a lot. And one of my most used features was change in a word. If I hit CIW in normal mode, wherever I was in this word, it was going to delete the word I was in and it put me in insert mode so I could replace it. I could do this very quickly and I use this a lot. I was very happy when I realized that Emacs has a function called kill word. Okay, let's, let's kill a word. Okay, kill word, let's call it, and what the. Okay, now the function called kill word does not kill a word. Like, what? Why? Let's, let's do the other function. There was another one, backward kill word. And this doesn't, this doesn't kill a word either. Okay, something's wrong. Something is actually wrong. This made me so mad that I was just about to install Vim again. And it's been a while. And I didn't really know what to do. Luckily you have me, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to really care. Because I'm just going to show you how to, uh, how to do it yourself. Convenient functions. Okay. Let's call this one kill all word and let's write a function that does what we want. Now first first things first you need to learn to think how uh, like an Emacs user, okay? Um, when you want to write a function to accomplish a goal, what steps must happen in order for what you'd like to do to happen? So yeah, let's have a word here. Let's say I'm in the middle and I want to delete the entire word. What must I do? Um, we know of a function called kill word. It kills a word. Well, it doesn't really, but it kills from our pointer on, or from our cursor, to the end. So if we go back um, with alt or meta a or meta b, and then kill word, this should work, right? How do we know what function is called? I'm pretty sure I show you this already. Control H K. Now you can input meta B. Um, the function it calls its backward word. It takes an optional argument. Um, and the optional argument is just a counter. Okay. So how do I? Okay. Let's get rid of this. So we just have to go to the start of the word and then kill the word. Let's do this then. Let's write a function. Um, kill whole word. Uh, electric pairs kicking in. This is really nice. Um, we already know this is an interact. I hate typing this word interactive function. And the first thing we need to do backward word. We need to get some auto completion going. Kind of remind me of this. And then we are going to kill word one. We are going to kill one word. Um, that's about it. Is this the final parenthesis? Yes. Now let's set up a key binding. Global set key. Um, technically you can do whatever you want. I want control C, then W, then W again. Um, control C stands for, well this is just a prefix I use for most of my own functions. You can bind it to whatever you like. Um, you know, you can, I'm, 
actually in, in the act of rebinding my entire key map. But for now, Ctrl C, hit W twice, this should kill a ward. Let's get out of there, let's see if we did this correctly. Okay, now let's let's find a ward, shall we? Let's go to scratch buffer, this is a long ward, let's move to B, middle Control C, W, W. Back, I, I typed ward instead of ward. Why am I like this? Why does this happen? Okay. Let's go back to the other buffer. Control C, W, W. Perfect. It works. Ah, we, saw, we saved humanity pretty much at this point. We now have a reliable way. Now you can bind it to something easier. Like, I'm pretty sure I had Control C, Control W for this um, initially. And it just worked. There's another issue that I have, and this is this is just me. Maybe, maybe I'm the only person who is annoyed by it. But let's say you have a good amount of white space here, and you have um, some more text. Let's say I would like to connect these two words. So what I'm going to do is hit backspace and wait. Uh, I don't like waiting because I use Emacs. So let's put this backspace or uh, this white space right back where it belongs. There is a package called Hungry Delete, which is going to delete all white space at all times until it notices a non-white space character. So, in other, so a word, another other character, which is really really useful and I like it a lot. So, maybe you don't need it. Like at first, sometimes it was useful. Other times it really wasn't. Um, you know, totally up to you totally up to you. I'm just going to install it and I'll, I'll show you how it works. It's it's nothing special, it's very very easy actually. Um, but it's, you know, it, it really is up to you. I'm going to use the package hungry delete. I'm going to ensure that it's installed and for configuration I'll just enable it globally. Um, no, it doesn't take any arguments. Okay. Save this, reload our configuration, go back to our scratch buffer. Wait, did it kill config? No, I did not. Okay. Hell. Oh, yeah. Wait. I am not used to that. I changed the key bindings for this series because this is another, this is a non custom keyboard. But whatever. And when I type backspace, it's going to delete all of it, which is a lot quicker. I can put one more back or one more white space in there if I need to. Say you have, you know, you hit, I don't know, maybe your cat ran over your keyboard, maybe you're into that. And, you know, he put a lot of white space in here. Deleting all of it and then putting one in is significantly faster than holding backspace to delete 44 um, like white space characters. Okay, am I done ranting? No. I am going to show you one more thing. This one's actually, uh, I don't know, I, do I want to show, eh, why not, see, one gripe I had with Emacs is, what if you would like to, you, or edit files as root, this one, this was a big issue for me, because I ended up opening a terminal inside of Emacs, um, changing my user to root, and then using nano, big no-no. I don't want to use now. I want to use Emacs. There's a package for it. Now um, there's a package. Let me kill this buffer finally, for the love of God. Called sudo edit. All you need for it externally is well, sudo properly set up for your user. If you are using a distribution that is easy to install, it's 99%. You know, sure, it's already installed. So let me show you how it works. It's actually very. It's another tiny package. It actually uses Tramp, which is a massive package. But, you know, the functionality of this one is actually very easy. Oops. It's called sudo edit. Now let's just ensure that it's installed. All you have to do is bind a key to it. I bind super and e to this. Uh, reason being, you know, se sudo edit, right? I mean, does it make sense? Does it make sense? Is it just me? Maybe it's just me. Alright, and... Wait, did I close it properly? Yes, I did. 
bit high. Something is something's not right. Oh, oops. I'm an idiot, apparently. Alright, just like this. Let's save this. Let's see. It's going to install tramp. It's going to install sudo edit. Now when I do super e, um, if you if you want to, you can put in your password and it's going to ask you for a file path. If you have idu installed, it's going to, you know, use idu. Let's get rid of there because I have string key enabled. I didn't even know I had it. Wait, can I not? Wait, out of there? I can. Okay. Let's kill this buffer. There is... Mm, do I want to show you more for now? No, that's enough complaining. We fixed some issues with Emacs that I had. There is some more that I actually have. And... Yeah, but this, this is something that we are going to talk about in the future, I guess. Thank you for watching. I hope you, uh, you managed to solve some of your own issues with Emacs. Or maybe this just gave you ideas to, you know, use some of this stuff. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.